Pat, are you there? Hello. Yes, I'm here. Hi, Hi. Pat. How are you today? We're good. Good. I just wanted to call in. I, I had several issues. I'm I'm a Christian, mm -hmm. but I'm not the Christian that I'm not the type of Christian that the traditional Christian. So you're not like I used to be. Uh, I don't know how you used to be. Okay. Good answer. <laughs> um, I I do believe in God. Uh huh. But I believe I, I I don't believe that Jesus is God. Okay. I believe that Jesus is part of God, like we all are. And I don't believe that God is a person. I believe in my meditations, I've come to realize because I was born and raised Baptist traditional religion, but it makes sense. Me too. And stuff has to make sense. Uh huh. And uh, when I started meditating. I entered into the energy that's inside of us, and okay. it's like a whole world okay. that's, inside, that's inside of us, but okay. it's deep, deep, deep inside of us. Yeah. Okay. And after realizing that, I realized that that it's all energy. Okay, stop. Uh huh. How do you know any of this? You're, you're meditating, and you say you entered <clears throat> the energies that are deep inside of us. That that's nonsensical until you explain it. Okay. Well. I, I left my body. How do you know? Because I, I could feel it. I could feel the energy inside me. I didn't know what it was at the point. I, I really didn't know what it was. But it was kind of scary. Okay. If you didn't know what it was, how did you was, find out what it was? Because when I started telling everybody about my experience, uh, everybody thought I was crazy except one person. Uh, and the person who didn't think you were crazy said you left your body. No. What she was, she had studied metaphysics. And she told me I was being introduced to metaphysics because everything I told her was stuff she had studied and read about, and okay. I had never studied or read about it. Okay, the type of thing you're talking about when you say metaphysics isn't anything that's demonstrably real. There's nobody with any demonstrable expertise in it, and it's no different from the one person who didn't think you were crazy just making stuff up. No, it, but metaphysics, the way we explain the spiritual metaphysics is understanding life from the physical realm as well as the invisible realm. What invisible realm and how do you know it exists? Because I was there, I was there, I've seen people that no. were there that had passed on to the next dimension. But, but, but Pat, you said you didn't know what it was. No, and when somebody I was else, to her, somebody else thought, told you, told you what they thought it was, and now <laughs> you're telling us that that's what it was. The thing is, we're not convinced by that person who told you that what you experienced was a metaphysical realm. Well, when she told me that they were gifts of the Spirit, and when she also said that because she had studied the life of Jesus, that these were some of the uh, gifts that he had. And I was said, told not to go swimming until 30 minutes after I ate. Does that make me? it? Does that make no, it true? No, 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 but the stuff that I saw was undeniable. Uh, okay. Well, uh, 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 we, I mean, we could prove you wrong by just denying it right now, but that won't make for a very okay. good conversation. It clearly is deniable because it's just your word over everybody else's except for those occasional people who have reached the same conclusion as you. Well, wh you know, wh I mean, I, that, or the only me? evidence you've got, Pat, the only evidence you've given us for why we should take what you're saying seriously as, you know, uh, as a uh, representative of some real um, uh, metaphysical realm is because this other person told you so. Well, I, I proved it in my own life. Okay, how can somebody else prove it? No, no, how I, can, well, I how can how somebody you else... If you're willing to do the work, you have to do the work. I, I understand, I'm, I'm asking, what process can somebody go through to prove this? And, okay. and if, it's, if it's demonstrable, why is it that you and a couple other people have managed to do this and nobody's won a Nobel Prize for this? Because, you know, a lot of people are, are spiritually lazy when it comes down to doing the work. They'd rather take someone else's word for, for what's true instead of searching out for themselves. Okay, you don't know how science works. Do you realize that, that grad students all across the world would love to find a method to demonstrate the thing that you're talking about? Because it would instantly catapult them from grad student to world-famous Nobel Prize winning world-changing scientist. You know what? Well, I, I give you, I give an experience. I mean, I, I'll tell you what to do. It's up to the person to do it, to reach that part of the science. In, in fact, you do it, and let's talk next week when, when you come back on. Sure, but you, let me, let me tell you, you if it do? involves holding a mirror under running water and being no, tired. No, okay, because no, no, that's, no, that's no, been done before. Do go ahead. Go get into a, a quiet place and sit quietly and do deep breathing, slowly and rhythmically. Do I need a bag? And, 
No, no. And as you're breathing, just ask yourself, who am I? Okay. And it may take a while. It may take a half an hour. It may take an hour. It may take two hours, but I guarantee you, if you ask yourself, who am I, long enough, you will get an experience that you've never experienced in your life. Okay. Let me ask, would, you, let me ask you this, Pat. Um, okay. How do I know that this experience is anything that ties to reality? Because when I ask this question, who am I, um, if I sit there long enough and, you know, reach whatever state it is, I don't necessarily know that what I'm receiving is real. And if Jeff does it, he's likely to get a different answer because his question, who am I, involves Jeff. So there can be no um, correlation between different people's experiences in this. You're talking. Okay, so that's not anything that we could scientifically demonstrate. But, but, but let me tell you, because I did this, the first time I did it, it took me about three hours, because I, I was determined to sit there until I heard something, because I was listening to a, a regular traditional religious station, and the minister said, do this, and he said, you would hear that you're a child of God, and you're loving, and beauty, and all this stuff. And you don't, think, it. you don't think that, did, that your determination, that. you don't think that your determination to sit there until you heard something had any effect on the results that you got? Uh, no, but, well... Yeah, I think so, because I, had, I sat there, because I was determined I was going to see if he knew what he was talking about. But what I got was something totally different. And it changed my <laughs> life from traditional religion, even though I'm a Christian, but it changed my ideas of traditional religion. So yeah. you got something that's totally different, and you take that as confirmation. So if we're in the laboratory, you intentionally you intentionally the crucifixion, what actually Pat, happened to the crucifixion. Pat, you, you sat there. And you perform this exercise that is not how you normally, you know, go about your daily life. You br right. br you breathed deeply, and you st you kept at it until you had a strange experience, and then you have assumed that that meant something. And and I, the thing I, I is, you you're it, getting it, ahead it, of yourself. It, it, you're getting it, ahead of yourself. I mean, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Um, I'm getting so excited. Go ahead. Uh, you know, I've I've done uh, when I was a little kid and an idiot, and it was a stupid thing that kids well, in my high school idiot. were doing. No, it's Let me finish. When it was a stupid thing kids in my high school were doing, I was doing deep breathing and then getting kind of dizzy and falling over, and uh, and that's actually a dangerous, stupid thing to do. But yeah. that was an experience unlike any I had ever had. And if I had been in the the state of mind that. You know, I was looking for some kind of sense of a supernatural thing. I easily could have jumped to the conclusion that that's what I got. And, and similarly, it's, well, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, and and similarly, we've done tests. There are there are scientists doing tests right now by stimulating portions of the brain that give people experiences that they universally declare um, are divine. And by the way, um, you could take you could take hallucinogenic drugs and other drugs, you know, salvia, LSD, whatever, that would produce an experience that is unlike any other that many people liken to divine experiences. My point is that this is this is the type of thing that you should expect to happen when you mess with your brain, which by the way, deep breathing is going to do, and when you train your brain to expect a particular result, which is exactly what you're doing. So what I'm asking is, you, you, you've demonstrate, you have offered nothing to demonstrate that what you experienced maps to anything real. It, 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 is it not true that it could still just be a product of your brain? No, because the brain in of itself doesn't work without this energy, which we call soul. Okay, no, 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 what no, energy? no, 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 what, no, no. What, what energy are we talking about? Now you've just you've just gone and made a circular argument. No, Be okay. What I'm trying to say is this is the way this is the way I I saw the crucifixion what actually happened at the crucifixion because of the experience that I had. I've solved, I've solved, in fact, I've just written a book about it. Well, I, 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 I'm, I'm glad that you saw it, but, in t you know, and I'll sit down and do some, some deep breathing, and maybe we can talk about it again, but um, I, you'll have to, unfortunately, and I don't mean this disrespectfully, unfortunately, you'll have to put me in the category of people who do think that you're crazy. And well, not, Matt, not crazy Matt, across the board. Matt, listen. Not crazy across the board. I, I don't think you're nuts. I don't think you need to be locked up. I'm saying that... On, on this subject, you've had experiences, and you, and I don't doubt that you had experiences. I'll take you at your word for that. The, mm -hmm. the problem is that you cannot tie those experiences to reality. People have hallucinations. A lot of things, you can't prove a lot of things in reality, but they still exist. Yes, no, 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 no. Yeah. The, the things that we can demonstrate but, in reality are the things that exist. That's it. And, and they're the things, air. and you they are, breathe, and, you and can't Pat, I can't demonstrate error. No, no, you can't. You have can't you never, you have you never blown it, up a you balloon? Can't see it. 
You can't prove that it's there. You can prove the outcome Pat, because we're living. Pat, you don't have to see it to demonstrate it. Seeing, but you have to see God know they exist. Pat, seeing something is not the only way to demonstrate it. And by the way, we can we can not only witness the effects of air, but you can see what's in air, and you've never blown up a balloon. That is an actual, actual tactile demonstration that air exists. Well, have you ever thought about when you, when you walk, when you die, you don't walk anymore, but when your spirit is inside you, you can walk and talk and breathe and do all that stuff? Yes. Have you ever thought about that? Uh, yeah. I, have, I have thought about that, and what I discovered in, in thinking and you know, uh, researching that is that medical science understands how, you know, how it is that our bodies can get up and walk around, and it has nothing to do with invisible spooks. Well, you know, I, I brought two people out of comas when the doctor said they weren't going to come 